today I am going to tell you about something that I really wish I had known when I was a binge eater for 10 years. And specifically, I'm going to talk about a psychological strategy to stop binges when they are happening or prevent them in the moment. And to do that, I'm going to tell you about a study that looked at two different psychological strategies and how they affected how much people with binge eating disorder ate after having a really upsetting thing happen to them. Hey there, I'm Mish, and I am a full-time researcher with my PhD, and I make videos based on studies to help you reach your weight loss, fitness, health, and nutrition goals. And for some background on this study and the psychological strategies they'll be looking at, a different study actually found that people with eating disorders are a lot lower in self-compassion. And if you've ever dealt with an eating disorder or disordered eating behavior in general, you can probably attest to the fact that you are much more likely to tell yourself you suck than you are to tell yourself that you're just a person trying your best and that everyone makes mistakes and that no one is perfect. And in fact, one theory of why some people binge eat is that they lack the usual cognitive self-soothing that most people do. And so they make up for that by self-soothing with food. So for example, whereas most people might deal with a stressful or difficult situation by saying, it's okay, this happens, everyone makes mistakes, no one's perfect, I will move on, I'll get over this. People who binge eat might instead say, I suck, why does this kind of stuff always happen to me? Or why do I always cause these bad things? And then eat in order to soothe themselves because they're not soothing themselves with their thoughts. And so based on this research, this study I'm about to tell you about looked at how self-compassion following a crappy situation where people felt really bad about themselves affected how much they ate. What the researchers did doesn't make me feel great, as you'll hear in a moment, but we're going to use it for good. So this was all ethical and approved and the participants consented and everything, but I just, I feel pretty bad. So what the researchers did was they had participants do a task that was extremely difficult and had a bunch of problems that were pretty much unsolvable. And then they told all the participants, no matter how well they actually did, that they did way below average. So the goal of this task was to make all the participants feel really bad about themselves. And the researchers were able to confirm via some questionnaires they gave to the participants that this task did indeed make everyone feel really upset afterwards. So the manipulation worked. We have now a bunch of stressed out people with binge eating disorder and bulimia. And then after the stressful task, they assigned half of the participants to a self-compassion condition and half of the participants to a rumination condition. And for the rumination condition, participants were asked to focus on how they currently felt and on their personal characteristics. So I will read you one of the prompts they were given in the rumination condition. Everybody has something about themselves that they don't like, something that causes them to feel insecure or not good enough. Think about what causes you to feel this way and the consequences of feeling this way. So if any of you out there are prone to binging and feel bad about yourselves a lot of the time, then this prompt probably pretty accurately captures what you're thinking about yourself a lot of the time, and especially after being told that you performed way below average on the test. And for the self-compassion condition, they pretty much instructed participants to do the opposite. So I'm going to read you that prompt as well. So they were told to show oneself kindness and understanding instead of criticism and self-judgment, to see one's pain, suffering, and imperfections as common to humanity rather than isolating, and lastly, to be mindful about one's feelings and thoughts instead of over-identifying with them. So the common thread here is that People were told to be kind to themselves and to distance themselves from the situation and to remember that no one is perfect and that everyone feels crappy sometimes and makes mistakes sometimes. And so after this stressor where they were told they did terribly on this test, followed by these instructions either to ruminate or to feel self-compassionately for 10 minutes, participants then were given three bowls of food. One was milk chocolate, one was blueberry muffins, and another one was chocolate chip cookies. And the participants were told they were just doing a taste test to rate how much they liked the foods. And interestingly, there was no difference between the self-compassion people and the rumination people in terms of how much they rated wanting the foods and how much they thought they would enjoy eating the foods. So how tasty the foods looked to them. 
However, after they'd started eating the food, the people in the rumination condition rated the food as tasting better and said that they wanted more food even after they'd finished the taste test compared to the self-compassion people. So to the self-compassion people, those treats didn't taste quite as good and they didn't report wanting quite as much. But now for the big crazy result that I really wish I had known 15 years ago is that the people in the self-compassion condition ate half the number of calories as the people in the rumination condition. So the only difference between these two groups of participants is that the self-compassion group was told to remind themselves that they don't actually suck that much, <laughs> whereas the rumination condition was just told to kind of think their normal thoughts essentially. So yeah, that's pretty wild that the people who were told to ruminate ate 300 calories, whereas people who were told to feel self-compassionately only ate 150 calories. So imagine that on the scale of a large binge or over many, many binges, like if you were to eat 2000 calories versus 1000 calories, that would probably make a huge difference for your life and your stomach capacity. At least it would have for mine. So if you struggle with binging or emotional eating, particularly in response to something stressful or feeling bad about yourself or feeling like you failed, then this advice can help you a lot, especially over time because these effects will compound over time. So if you consistently feel self-compassion like every day or every time you want to binge, these effects will get stronger because you will just start learning to think self-compassionately on a regular basis and then you might not even feel the urge to binge anymore. At least that's how it's been for me. And self-compassion has definitely been maybe even the number one thing that stopped my binging. So when I was first learning to intuitively eat, I was binging a ton. Like I remember, I mentioned this example before, but it just always sticks out to me as like the time I started eating intuitively. And this is when I allowed myself to eat an entire batch of homemade Thin Mints that I'd made, which in the past would have just been like, earth-shattering, world-ending <laughs> horror for me. But I told myself, you know what? This is part of the process. I'm getting better every day. No one is perfect. I've been struggling with binging for a long time, so it's okay if I don't stop immediately. And I'm just gonna let myself do this so that I can show myself that it's okay to overeat sometimes. And it's even okay if I gain a little bit of weight because it ended up coming right off. But yeah, self-compassion can help in literally every single area of your life. Like. Yeah, just because feeling crappy about yourself doesn't really accomplish anything. You may think it's a big motivating factor in your life and helps you not slip up, but if you instead motivate yourself with self-compassion and a desire to do well for the sake of others, for example, then you don't need self-loathing to motivate you. But yeah, that's kind of my, that's my little soapbox there. So not only can self-compassion help you in the moment, on your first try, when you're about to binge, it can also almost certainly help you long term. And if you feel like you're a hopeless case, I want you to keep in mind that the participants in this study whose binges were cut in half by self-compassion were people who were actually diagnosed with severe binge eating disorder and bulimia. So you are not a hopeless case. This can work for you too. Just give it a try. And please, please let me know if you try this and it helps you because it absolutely makes my day and often my week and often even my month when people message me to tell me that my videos or something I said helps them in their goals and help them stop binging especially. So it helps me know what kind of information works for you and what kind of videos I should be sharing and it just makes me so happy. So yeah, I would love to hear it if you give this a try. So yeah, I hope this was helpful to you. If you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the notification bell below. And if you're feeling generous, please, please like and share so that other people can have this information too, because it is so important that people know that being kind to themselves is going to help them a lot more than beating themselves up. So thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.